what I say is where the mind goes, the body will follow. So if you don't make up in your mind first that you will survive a situation, whether it's physically defending yourself, domestic violence, you know, internal conflict, whatever your situation is, you know, of course, fear has a lot to do with that. But if you don't already make up in your mind that you will get out of that situation, that you will elevate, that you will survive, then you're already defeated in so many ways. And it's that much harder to get out. Hey, family, I'm Tonda, the F there chick, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Tonda, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for a long time now, and I'm going to tell you why, because I love to start every conversation with just talking about how I come to know my guests. And it's no different. So I want to tell you how I come to know you. So... Um, I was introduced to you because you did a live interview with Dr. Bobby Price on his Instagram. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I'm like, did she hear me on the radio? Did she see my Instagram? <laughs> Was she in my class? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a you did a, a, a live interview with Dr. Bobby Price on his Instagram last year. And during that time, um, he, he did that particular episode because during that time, you know, women of color um, were, you know, we were coming up missing and we still are. But it, it was like this. It was huge- some incidents in Atlanta specifically. Yeah. In Georgia. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was this huge push to really like bring awareness to, you know, us black women just popping up pregnant and I mean, not pregnant, but popping up missing. And it was like during that time, I felt like it was just getting like really, really crazy because you had Uber drivers just like being really, um, you know, creepy and, and shady. I was hearing stories of, you know, women who were who were able to like escape and run into gas stations and the kidnappers were like bold and was like chasing them up into the gas stations yo it was a <laughs> it was a crazy scary time and yeah. if I remember correctly I believe Dr. Bobby had a cousin or somebody in his family go through that experience which prompted his conversation with you and so um it was really interesting that he had a conversation because you know Dr. Bobby you for you guys who don't know, Dr. Bobby is a vegan nutritionist. So he right. all about, you know, like health and eating well and stuff like that. So when he was talking, he had Tonda on talking about self-defense, I, you know, let me, let me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let me listen in. But yeah, but he did it because someone, um, a young lady in his family went through that experience. So he brought um, Tonda on, but it was something that you said that really um, stood out to me because in my business coaching, I'm all about self-awareness. So anytime somebody uses the word self-awareness, it, you know, it perks up, it perks up my ears. And um, I don't remember exactly how you worded it, but I know it's, it's, it stood out to me uh, because the video is no longer there. This was during the times when videos only lasted for 24 hours on on Instagram. So I wasn't able to go back in and listen to it again, but you said something like in order to mentally survive, if you find yourself in a life or death situation that you need to be self-aware. And so that like really stood out to me. Cause I was just like, really like even self-awareness, self-awareness comes up even when you're in a life or death situation and 
um, literally have to fight for yourself. This woman is talking to us about self-awareness. And I wanted to start the conversation there. So can you explain to us how self-awareness contributes to our survival when we're in a life of death situation? Yeah. So what I probably um, was alluding to and uh, more so was the power of mindset. So my philosophy is self-defense is really a mindset. And a part of that is, you know, being aware of your surroundings and intuition and all that good stuff. But what I say is where the mind goes, the body will follow. So if you don't make up in your mind first that you will survive a situation, whether it's physically defending yourself, domestic violence, you know, internal conflict, whatever your situation is, you know, of course, fear has a lot to do with that. But if you don't already make up in your mind that you will get out of that situation, that you will elevate, that you will survive, then you're already defeated in so many ways. And it's that much harder to get out. And self-awareness comes into play because you have to, I teach holistic, you know, self-defense. So, you know, we talked about Dr. Bobby and part of that is what you put into your body. Um, and that affects your mental state. It affects your physical state, which affects your self-defense and you being able to physically defend yourself, mentally defend yourself. And you have to be aware of your surroundings because you need a leg up. You need to um, have enough time, if you can, to react. And the worst possible situation is a blitz attack, which means you don't see it coming. And again, self-awareness plays into that because even if it's just a split second, a couple seconds, you can prepare um, to deal with that situation, whether it's, you know, backing up, whether it's um, preparing your mind state, whether it is physically defending yourself, yelling, whatever that reaction is, the time is precious. You can't get it back. So if you can even spare like a second, two seconds and see something coming, then that is reducing your risk of not making it out of that situation. Mm, I love that. And man, that's the reason why I wanted to have you on the, on the podcast, because you bring such a different perspective to uh, self-defense. Because like you say, you all about you know, a holistic approach. And I love how you say where the mind goes, the body will follow, you know, mm -hmm. because that, that quote reminds me of the really popular quote of, you know, um, so, like where the mind goes, you know, your actions will follow, like energy, it follows what a, where you put your mind on, right? So what you focus on, that's where the energy flows to. Exactly. It's, it's like, wow, like that's, I want to say it's deep, but it's like, it's not deep. It's, it's like common sense, right? You have to yeah. focus on what it is that's going on uh, around you. I really wish Dr. Bobby, you know, was able to like save that video. Cause I even remember how you even talked about, like, even if you were in a situation where you just like, you know, as butt naked, like, I don't care. Like you really need to like see where you are, you know, and focus on where you are because anything can be a tool or a weapon. But if you're not yes. aware of your surroundings and where you are, then, you know, because you can defeat somebody with, with anything. And that like gave me goosebumps because I'm just like, wow, because, you know, taking away your, your clothes, you know, what, what will we do? We are coward and we'll be like, oh, you know, um, really retreat or whatever. But if, you know, you just put the way you said it, it just put so much power. I feel like back into that situation in my mind, because it's like, don't focus on the nudity, like Keisha snap out of it. You know, what's yeah, what, yeah. what can you, you know, what can you use? And I, and I love that. I love that approach because it's like, how many of us would even think like that? Cause in, in, and, and I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, when you said flow, where your energy flows, um, and that's everything, every situation we're in, we can, um, you know, kind of take these principles and apply it. So when you're like, because energy never leaves, it just transfers, you know, right. it, 
it transfers. And so, like you said, what you focus on is what will expand. So if you're focusing on your lack, if you're focusing on what you don't have, what you don't have access to, then that is not helping you. It's not serving you. So if you focus on what you can do, what you can accomplish, um, then you're that much better off. So it's not, you know, okay, who, who, nobody's here to help me, or I'm smaller than this person, or I have a disability, or, you know, I, I'm not in the best um, situation. No, it's okay, what do I have? I have my mindset, regardless of anything. I have my mentality, I have um, my fists, I have my feet, I have my voice. And even if you don't have your voice, you have your spirit, you have the energy within you because what people don't recognize or realize, and it's not their fault, it's just we're not taught these things. So predators are afraid of two things, getting caught and getting hurt. So they're afraid of getting caught. Um, and the way you can deal with that fear of theirs by helping introduce them to their fear is by fighting back because they're relying on you you know, being too afraid to fight back. They're relying on you being too scared to scream. They're relying on you being too um, intimidated by maybe their size or what, what they're saying um, to go against the grain and do the total opposite of what they're telling you to do. So that's how you address a predator or attacker's fears by interrupting their plan in their head. So it's not really even as much about the plan in your head. It's about doing the opposite and interrupting the pattern. Because see, before they approached you, they had in their mind <laughs> what they thought the situation was going to play out like, right? Yeah. And so it's about interrupting that and, and being bold, unashamed, intentional about how you present yourself and how you're going to deal with the threat that is in front of you. So um, it's about trusting your gut because what I want you guys to understand is you already have everything within you. You just have to tap into it. You have to have that confidence. You have that, have that self-awareness, not only externally, but internally. You have to have the self-awareness of, of who you are and whose you are. So when you tap into that thing, it's not only about self-defense and, and protecting yourself. And it's not that, you know, you won't ever be in a situation or um, ever be tested or um, tried in reference to protecting yourself. It's just about reducing your, reducing your risk um, because you can do everything right and still be in a situation. So I don't want you to blame yourself if, if somebody's out there that has been, um, you know, sexually assaulted or has been in a domestic violence situation or even just, you know, a, a, a crime against you, maybe an armed robbery or something. Uh, we've all dealt with trauma, but understand that is just a piece of, of something that has happened to you. It doesn't, it doesn't have to dictate how you move forward. You dictate how you move forward. So that doesn't have to be the end all be all. And it's a process, absolutely. But I just want you to understand the power that you have as a woman, as a person in the spirit within you that can get you through anything. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness is not only um, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, knowing what's going on around you, which is situational awareness, um, but it's about the power that you possess and the tools that you possess that you can use to help you escape a situation and just survive. Because sometimes your gut may be telling you to, to just not react right now because it's not the right time. And, and that's okay too, because the opportunity will present itself and then you react and then you, you fight back. Um, but whatever your gut is telling you, I just want you to start tuning in to listening to yourself. Um, in everyday situations, and that will lend itself to helping you in those those threatening and dangerous situations. Ooh, if that makes sense, that that makes perfect sense. Everything <laughs> you said makes perfect sense. You know, because you guys think about it. You know, if if a perpetrator is coming after you and he has you, what's the you know, what's one of the first things he's going to attack? Your mindset, because if he can instill fear in you, he can control, he can control you. So stand, you know, on top of our mindset and control of our mindset, man, that makes 
so much sense because now, you know, you're breaking his control over you. So now, you know, you, you're less fearful and you more apt to, you know, fight back, you know, and, and literally fight for your life. That makes so, that makes so much sense. Yeah. And Cause they want an easy target. They want an they easy w- target. <laughs> so if you fight back and make it a difficult, yeah. you know, the more difficult you make it for them, the less likely there are they are to continue trying to control you. Yeah. Because if they cannot control you, then it's it's not an easy situation for them. They'll go find somebody else um, mm-hmm. that they can more easily control and who's gonna do what they say, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And I and I love how um how you say too that you already have everything in you. Because you know, normally when we hear that. It's related to um, chase a purpose or achieving goals. You already have everything in you to succeed, right? But I love how you also bring that full circle to you already have everything in you to survive a life-threatening situation. You guys, do you see why I needed to have her on this podcast? Because you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. We already have yeah. that we need in, in us to to survive like you bring up you know the gut feeling which is something else I wanted to you know get into it into as well you know just mm-hmm. listening to your gut and your intuition because now may not be the perfect time to to strike right like that's that's huge and and how often do we dismiss our our gut instincts yes. and gut intuition just in a normal course of life <laughs> absolutely that's why I'm like pay attention outside of the dangerous situations because we do it every day as women, like society, our upbringing, everything is telling us, be nice, you know, go go with the flow. And, you know, um, they, I know you have a bad feeling or um, you aren't comfortable around this person, but what have they done to you? You know, what have they done to make you feel that way? It, they could be on paper doing nothing to make you feel that way, but we are spiritual beings. We are energy. Like I said, energy doesn't, it just transfers and we can pick up on things subconsciously. They may be doing something that consciously we may not be able to articulate why we don't feel comfortable around this person. So, and children, if you pay attention to children, they really are still more tapped into that. And that's why I'm like, as we, you know, mature on this earth, um, society and just life, it, it kind of dials that down. And we have to tap back into it. You have to tap in because that is um, our personal alarm system. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. Like if a child doesn't feel comfortable hugging somebody um, and it doesn't mean that that person is a molester or anything, but allow them to not hug that person. Um, If they don't feel comfortable going to say hello or whatever, you know, just allow them to work through that. It may be an indicator for them that I don't trust this person and it may not be, but don't force anything like that on children. And, you know, I'm an 80s baby. So, you know, back in the day, you had to do certain things. But, you know, we've evolved as as human beings and and we've learned and know better now. So um, I have seen that more parents are, are not forcing children to do that. But, you know, as adults now, it's like we're ingrained with that. And it's like, no, it's not about being nice. It's okay because if my safety is at stake, it's like, mm, if I don't feel like being that close to you or speaking to you or allowing you in my space, um, respect that. And if you care enough about me, um, and it could be your friends, because a lot of times when we talk about sexual assault, let's be honest, um, 75% of the time, and that's conservative number, you're going to know the person. Yep. So it's not about, um, oh, well, don't you trust me? Or, you know, I'm not going to do nothing to you. No, it's about listening to you first. Because if that man, if that person um, truly cares about you, then they will respect your feeling that you feel uncomfortable and be okay with that. Because they have your best interests at heart. I have so many male friends in if, if that was a situation for me, they would understand that and be okay and, and still be there at the end of the day and not cuss me out or call me out my name if I don't want to do something. Mm-hmm. But you have to be confident within yourself yeah. and not look for that validation outside of yourself. And it's, it's a process for some people and that's okay, but realize 
if somebody truly cares about you and loves you, um, then that shouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, when you was talking about the children, paying attention to paying attention to to children and, and how they, you know, react and respond around yeah. a, a person, you know, um, I'm a I'm a little older than you, but I'm not gonna say how much. I'm <laughs> when you say, you know, I'm an '80s baby, so I can relate because you know um because back then when i was little it's like if i didn't want to hug somebody it's like somebody was like girl go ahead and give so-and-so a hug it's okay give them a hug and give them a kiss and it's just like you know we when you do that when you force a child to do something that they're not technically want to do and you know you guys take this yeah you teaching them how to not trust their gut and their reactions. Yes, absolutely. You teaching them that. So now, as an adult, they they don't even know how to like trust their intuition. Like, why am I feeling yes. like this? But you know, I need to do this. You know, anyway, even though I don't feel right doing it. And, you know, and it and it brought me back to another conversation um, that I had, you guys, it was my conversation with Shahara and we talked about communication and I brought up how, you know, as a child, we was taught to, you know, never talk to strangers. And we talked about how that translate into today when we need to just communicate with people, whether or not uh-huh. we're paying our salaries, you know, pitching our businesses or whatever in a networking event, in any type of event, we clam yeah. up here. We don't want to talk to people because we've been taught as a child to never talk to strangers. Like that was now it, we needed to learn that lesson. Right. But but we didn't teach. We Context. Discerning. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't we wasn't taught discernment. So, yeah, uh, it made me it made me think of that, you know, so we really have to just like pay attention and, and allow our, our children to. Um, feel what they feel you know it's like it's okay because you're literally setting the the foundation and, and if you don't believe me you think about yourself what what was you told as a child and it's affecting you right now right now today like just <laughs> right <laughs> I mean I'm just thinking about myself and it's like <laughs> If I could just, you know, share some personal stories, it's like, uh, and my and my mom and I have talked about this, but you know, as I got older, went off to college and stuff, it's like, um, my mom would always say, "You don't ever tell me nothing. You don't ever tell me nothing," and it's like, you do realize that you taught me not to talk to you, right? <laughs> like I was afraid of my mom. Like my mom was like, and I I didn't really, you know, get outside of the box. You know, I was a, a good child, but you know, I was afraid of my mom and. And she reared me in that regard. So it's like, uh, I remember I was a kid and I had a band, um, a band recital. Mm-hmm. And I was so afraid to tell my mom I had this band recital to the fact that that night my band teacher had called and then my mom got mad at me because I never told her about it. <laughs> and he's like, where is she? And she started fussing at me and it's like, but I was too afraid to tell you because if I would have said something then you would have started fussing. <laughs> and cause I would always sign up for stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, literally, and that's something insignificant, but in the scheme of things, like I was just afraid to talk to my mom cause the reaction that I would get when I would talk to her about from little things to big things. Um, but also, um, it's important, and this is in regards to healing, when yeah. you when you become an adult and you start to talk about those things, when I learned my mom's story and what she was going through through that time, because as a child, I, um, I always felt and knew some kind of way that it wasn't about me. I was just kind of the outlet for whatever was going on in her life. Sometimes I would get that, that reaction. But when I, when I learned about her story as an adult, I understood and it filled in those voids. And I, I, I pray that everybody is able to really get that full circle moment and fill in those gaps and be able to heal that it wasn't about you, um, how you were treated or how somebody reacted to you sometimes. Um, don't try not to take it personally. And even if you don't know their story, um, kind of be able to reach out and maybe get counseling or whatever. It wasn't about you. It's nothing that you did. It's nothing that um, you provoked per se. 
uh, what, and it could be, come on, for me, it was like me and my mom and talking to her just it, about life and what I had going on. But for you, it could be, you know, your molestation. It could be your domestic violence. It could be, you know, um, your bullying. It's so many different things that we go through. It, it could be, you know, verbal abuse. It doesn't have to be physical, but it, it wasn't about you. And I, I pray that that person that gave you that trauma or um, affected you in that traumatic way is able to maybe share their story with you at, at some point, or you're able to understand and just get perspective. Um, and even with us as people who experience trauma, the way we project that onto others, you know, it can be turned around the same way. So I, I think we just need to have more grace with each other in that regard. Um, and we'll all be better served. And I, I know I probably got off topic, but uh, <laughs> that right. was just something that I wanted to share um, that, I, that I felt could maybe help somebody because it, it helped me. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You didn't get off the topic at all. Oh, somebody, somebody needed to, to hear that, you know, um, Tonda, part of my, my, my story is that, you know, I was a victim of sexual abuse for eight years. It was something that happened. It was my mom, husband, and she knew about it. Other people in the family, mm -hmm. knew about it, but you know, it was this, it was this family secret. And yeah. like, and through my healing process, I had to learn and understand that it wasn't about me. Some, something happened possibly to my mom to cause her to know that this was going on and to not do anything. Right. So me understanding that helped me to heal, but, you know, I, I just wanted to just add on to that. Sometimes you won't know that person's story because I, I don't yep. know what my mama's story is, but the fact that I don't know her story, I did not allow that to stop me from getting the healing that I needed. Right. So it would be great. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe one, maybe one day she may come and say, you know what, as a child, yeah. well, whatever, maybe, I don't know. But if that day never come, I didn't allow it to stop me from getting the healing that I need. So yes. that action stopped with me. So like my children, when I have children, mm -hmm. they won't go through that if God forbid, but if, you know, if it did, I know what to do. It's not going to yeah. be, accurate, you know, so, um, yeah, um, somebody, somebody needed to hear that. So, you know, thank you for, thank you for sharing that with us, you know, yes, thank um, you. as far as like the self-defense, like, okay, so tuition, you know, intuition, being self-aware, things like that. Right. Okay. We got mm -hmm. it. How do we, how do we walk around this earth being aware without being paranoid? Because I don't want people to walk away. I don't want women to walk away from this episode feeling paranoid about what's yeah. going on. I think the paranoia um, a lot of times more so is rooted in what we don't know. We're afraid of the things that we aren't aware of. And so, you know, I really encourage people who come through my classes or, you know, on webinars and stuff to you know, do some research, you know, read about the stories. So, because really it's nothing really new under the sun, you know? So it just may be a different state, a different city, a different person, you know, a couple different scenarios, but the gist of how people are attacked and, and the way that things happen, a lot of it is the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I encourage people to get exposure and um, that will help reduce that fear Mm -hmm. And paranoia goes back to just understanding the power that you have. Um, again, fear of the unknown of what will I do? Well, start, you know, learning what to do. Start learning how people um, who are predators and attackers, what, what they look for per se. And it's, it doesn't mean that it's something within you, um, but it's like, again, energy. So when you walk around presenting a certain way, it's going to deter somebody from choosing you. But if they do choose you, it's still not your fault. Um, it's just something that they picked up on thinking that you will comply and be a soft target, an easy compliant um, person that they can control. So uh, do some research on you know what, even look into, people don't realize this, but 
you can type in your address in America anywhere and see what sexual predators are in your neighborhood. Now, it may scare you, but yeah. just know what's going on. You can pull that up. Yeah. Um, but just look through stories, start talking to people um, and presenting, um, not presenting, but um, talking to your friends and family about what you're thinking like you know have you ever had this situation have you ever experienced this situation you know i'm i'm concerned i'm kind of paranoid to um go out by myself um so start easing your way into your fears whether it's being by yourself being in the dark you know maybe start out um you know making sure that you're not alone by going out with other people making sure that um you are protected in a way, well, let me just say this. It's, you can't ever totally 100% keep from being attacked if somebody chooses to attack you. Attack you. If yeah. somebody wants to do something to you, they're gonna, mm-hmm. yes, do their best to accomplish that task for themselves. Yeah. What we have power over, what we can control, so I always say control the controllables and the thing we can control is how we respond. It's how we're prepared for a situation. So you can reduce your fears by being more prepared. And that is um, following the swivel technique that I teach, which is um, all about like self-defense principles. Um, it is maybe if, if, you're, if you have a fear of paranoia that you physically can't, aren't strong enough, well maybe start like, you know, a workout regimen. Um, whether it's lifting weights or just walking to increase your endurance or, you know, take baby steps in that regard. Um, maybe sign up for a self-defense class or martial arts. Um, and then the mindset part, honestly, it all goes back to mindset. <laughs> I know I keep talking about it, but it really does. Start tapping into your, um, well, tap into it, but you can also increase your intuition by just being creative and, that is maybe taking a music class or if you play music, um, maybe start playing your keyboard again, drawing, uh, doing poetry, tapping into that right brain creativity part, um, which is where your intuition is. That's how you can increase it. And I know it sounds crazy, but it just goes back to science and right hemisphere, left hemisphere stuff. And that's where our intuition lies. Um, wow. So yeah, physically, just um, start, you can increase your confidence by just maybe doing some workouts, getting active, um, mentally work that uh, creativity in, in your mindset by increasing your intuition in those ways. And then uh, also being aware of the types of scenarios that happen. So if you come across them, if you are in that situation, it is not foreign to you. Mm-hmm. And that will reduce your fear and your reaction because we're afraid of the things that haven't happened yet because we don't know how it's going to go down. But if you are more aware of scenarios and situations that have happened and how they happen and how people have escaped from them and survived them, then it won't be so foreign to you if you find yourself in that predicament. Mm, that is good. I did not, I never would have put the creative, um, tapping into your creative mind to- yeah. I never when I learned that. about that myself, I was kind of surprised and I made sure I put that in the book because I'm like, this is, this is like a fun part of self-defense that can help you, you know, and yeah. people really need to understand that. Man, thanks for, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing that. They say you learn something new every day and you definitely, <laughs> <laughs> you, you definitely, you definitely do, you know, yeah. when, when you talked about communicate, you know, your, your fears to other people, man, that is so Man, that is so true. Um, it made me think about, okay, so before the pandemic, you guys, I would do like live interviews where I would go to different places around the Houston area. I actually live in Houston. I would go oh, to okay. Yeah, I would go to different places around, you know, the Houston area. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know the city like that. So a lot of these places are foreign to me. And I would go yeah. 
do these interviews and you know sometimes um you know like doors would be locked you gotta call people and stuff like that and you know when you had a, a, a interview you know you got on heels and, and, and stuff like that so <laughs> I I asked my my husband you know sometimes I would ask my husband I was just like man can you like rearrange your schedule to like come um to an interview with me and you know sometimes mm-hmm on what's going on he's just like you know you you got this it's, it's all good you know you're strong or or whatever and then like one time because I just had this feeling like man like no I, I I'm not sure about this I've never been to this area and I got real serious with him and I was just like no babe like for real yeah um because I, I've never been to this place before and you know with this particular interview, by the time I come out, it's going to be dark. Just, you know, I don't know. Just, it will just make yeah. you feel more comfortable if you're with me. And when he saw that I was like serious, he was like, okay, I'm going to yeah. come. And when he came, I mean, nothing crazy happened, but when he came, he was just like, man, I'm so glad that I came with you because it was a struggle to like get into the building, you know, the code that they gave me, it didn't work. And so now yeah. he was just like, man, I'm, I'm glad I came with you. So because I made it serious, like nobody for real. Yeah. He, now it's not even an issue when I say you know what babe he's like okay no problem you know because so when you said that that's good that you stayed with it yeah yeah because because how often will we be like because it has been times he's just like okay yeah he right I got this you know I can do it or whatever again not trusting my intuition and not anything happened because nothing ever happened when he wasn't with me but you don't know if it didn't happen that time because he was with you so we don't know, but no. that's okay. Like, you don't want to be tested. You want to deter <laughs> something from happening. So yeah. it's yeah. like, okay, well, you know, and I'm glad he he said that versus like, see, I told you, you would have been okay. Like I came for nothing, you know? And yeah. so, um, yeah, like just because nothing happened doesn't mean that it wouldn't have happened uh, or that, that, scenario and environment that you created which is like you didn't feel comfortable you wanted him with you that probably deterred somebody from uh or it could have deterred somebody from coming at you because you were by yourself it was dark like the your risk was going up like the fact that you were unfamiliar with the area you probably were giving off an energy because you know you were unfamiliar and you are already not comfortable going there. Like it's so many little things that can lend to attracting your the eyes of somebody who's like looking for somebody to to attack or accost or whatever, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I just, yeah. So I wanted to share that with people. That's great. Yeah, people don't know if, if this is a first time being introduced to you, they don't know that you used to be an ex-cop. Yes. So, um, so in my former life, I was a police know, officer, Mrs. Officer. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Officer, Mrs. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. So does your, does your? I'm wondering, does your police background play a role in why you're so adamant about teaching? You know, um, teaching women how to train their mind, and and you know, when it comes to. Um, self-defense you know because you you go hard about training your mind so I wanted to background play a part in that I mean I can't pinpoint that you know it doesn't I started so young as an officer like I I would be absolutely crazy to say it had no part in it because um even for me to get into this space I got into it because I was transitioning out of policing and I'm like you know what like it's been over 10 years I don't want to just abandon everything I learned all of my experiences like I've seen so much that I think um, could help people. And I was so limited in regards to the people I encountered um, as a police officer, because it's like, okay, you, you get, you respond to a call, you only have so much time to try to impart any wisdom and knowledge and help for a situation, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that transitioning out of that got me into creating Empower Defense. So um, I definitely think it had, you know, impact into that. And just, it it would frustrate me because I would come across so many women and girls that just didn't have the tools to deal with, to properly deal with 
the situations that they faced or the environment that they, you know, were in or encountered, whether it's like truancy or, you know, uh, being trafficked, domestic violence, um, just even in life, not elevating and seeking better for themselves, you know? So um, I just felt like I had a lot to offer in reference to just being able to protect ourselves in a greater way because when we, when women are attacked and go through such traumatic experience, specifically sexual assault, it impacts your mentality. And that's somewhere, if you can avoid being in that situation, you know, um, if I can maybe save somebody by teaching them how to escape rape, even if they just had to physically get out of it, but it, the act didn't um, happen because you knew how to escape, like, that can save not only themselves, but the people who they're gonna affect because it's gonna affect them um, in society as a citizen, being able to be a productive citizen in society. It's gonna affect how they deal with um, maybe their job and their relationships there, how um, they deal with their future personal relationships, intimate relationships, how they deal with their children. Like sexual assault survivors, their trauma has impacted them in so many ways. PTSD, depression, suicidal, like schizophrenic. Um, trauma is not just that incident. It affects you for the rest of your life. And as my sister, in so many ways, it impacts me as well because we are all citizens of this world and we are impacted by each other's experiences. So anyway, um, that is definitely being a police officer um, has, has had a say in what I'm doing now. Man, that's, that's beautiful. You guys, if you follow me for any length of, of time, whether it's on social media, if we work together here on a podcast, you know, I talk about all the time, how we are interconnected and Tonda just so beautifully described that to us, how you not getting the healing that you need over your traumatic experience, how it affect other people, even outside of your relationships and how you, you know, taking the necessary steps to, to learn how to defend yourself, to prevent, like how that, you know, how that can cause a ripple effect you know, not just with you, but for all of us and the, and the people around you. And it can ultimately affect, you know, how or if you even chase purpose and operating purpose. Yes. We, we're all about purpose here, operating purpose. And all of this affects it. All of this affects, um, affects how, we, how we operate in purpose. But um, you, you brought up the swivel technique. And I want you to explain that to, to my, to my listeners, because uh, I've heard you talk Absolutely. about it, but I would love for you to explain it. Yeah. So pretty much the swivel technique is an easy way to remember the self-defense principles. And as I um, was, as I teach my classes, when I first began, um, there are certain principles. And for me, honestly, I felt like it was, it wasn't easy for me to remember in reference to teaching and I'm like, if I can't even easily remember this, like, how are they going to easily be able to like call off and remember just mentally um, these principles? And so I would always tell them, hey, you guys, you have to keep your head on a swivel. You have to know what's going on around you at all times, because that is going to give you that increased chance of being able to react and respond appropriately. And so, you know, I prayed about it and I, I kind of sat with it for a few days and you know, I was given the swivel technique as an acronym. So the S stands for scan your surroundings because you always have to know what's going on around you, obviously. The W is weed over me. You are, um, there is power in numbers. So if you are with somebody, stay with them. And if you are by yourself, then move towards other people. The I is intuition should inform your decision. We already talked about, you know, trusting your gut, allowing that to inform your decisions. Um, and that is our personal alarm system. The V is voice speaks victory. Even if you have no physical weapon, your voice is a weapon and you can use it. Even if you can't form the words, you can scream, you can cause attention to yourself. And even using your voice to let somebody know, hey, do not come past that line. Don't come any closer. Because what happens? If they come closer, you know that should be a red flag that they are not 
trying to listen to you and they have crossed a boundary. So implementing, well, I'll get to that in a second. So the I is intuition uh, should inform your decision. The V voice speaks victory. The Sorry. The E, escape, don't wait, knowing where your exits are, um, paying attention to, you know, street signs and things like that, landmarks, um, knowing how you're going to escape uh, an environment, and then knowing how you can physically escape. So whether that's martial arts, whether it's one of my self-defense classes, whether it's just some techniques, um, knowing what you're going to do ahead of time, if you're presented with a certain situation, uh, whether it's a phrase on, you know, a code word or something like that, having escape techniques. And then L is levels. Levels save lives. The L is my favorite because I just talked about boundaries. You have to implement boundaries because if you have no boundaries, then anybody can do anything because you have not pre-planned, okay, this is where the buck stops, right? This is how far I'm willing to go. This is how far I'm allowing somebody else to go. But not only in reference to just personal boundaries, but boundaries um, and levels, if you are attacked and in a situation, um, making it that much harder for them to get to you. So a level is a fence. A level is a door. A level is a gate. A level can be a building. If you are shopping, a level can be even a shopping cart because the more distance you have between you and a threat, the better. Because the more um, distance and the more energy that they're going to exert to get to you, the less likely they're going to continue to exert that energy because you're a hard target, right? Right. So if somebody can't physically get to you, then it's a lot um, less likely that they're going to be able to harm you outside of like, you know, shooting you or something like that. But understand the distance is in your favor. So the more distance you can create, the better. So scan your surroundings to S, W, we, not me. I, intuition should inform your decisions. The V, voice speaks victory. E, escape, don't wait. And L levels save lives. And that's the swivel technique. The yeah. basic self-defense principles um, to reduce your risk of being attacked. I just got a, I just had a, a mental download. I'm gonna call it the Holy Spirit to do an episode on boundaries. Because when you said levels create levels, some of us, we don't even create just regular boundaries in our relationships. So we're not even able to just create boundaries in our relationship. It's going to be hard to create those levels, you know, in a life or death situation, because everything that Tonda, you know, taught us and share with us today, it's like everything that we should be doing in our personal lives, right? Just to yes. be successful in life in general. Like these are the same principles that we use to defend ourselves she ha literally hasn't yes <laughs> has she, has she taught us new things really things that we already know that you just like repurpose and yes and has taught us how to use it to literally defend ourselves i hope you yeah <laughs> that's why i say self-defense is is holistic <laughs> like there is nothing that i teach in this class that you or in my platform that you can't apply to your life yeah, absolutely absolutely and you're in cali you live in california right yeah i'm based in la i'm a georgia girl in a cali world um but right now i'm not even there i'm in mexico so <laughs> i get i get around like i'm worldwide <laughs> Okay, because I was gonna, I was gonna say, because you know, now we're we're in the middle of, of a pan, of a pandemic, so I know it's yes. probably affected how you you know do self defense classes in person. But I was gonna ask, like, even before the pandemic, like, do you do anything virtually where we can actually learn? Yeah, skills. Tell us. Um, most actually, I um, I did a class in person last year with this nonprofit, and so mm -hmm. you know, with COVID and all that kind of stuff. Um, the director just called me back uh, last week and she's like, hey, like, can you do a webinar for us? Because the girls have been asking about you. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Like virtual classes, um, you know, webinars, anything like that. Um, and then I'm still about to start doing some in-person classes, too. Okay. Um, and, you know, you just have to accommodate. But I don't have anything ongoing. It's pretty much like people just hire me and you know, bring me to the group that's already established. Uh, usually Sexual Assault Awareness Month, I definitely try to host a class, which is in April. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I may do spurts, you know, of series of classes, which I did in LA. But honestly, people usually just bring me and I'm kind of here and there and and schedule that way. Okay, tell us. Conferences, your- workshops, stuff like that. Tell us your website or how to get in contact with you. Uh, you can go to the website at myempoweredefense.com and there's a form on there. You can request, um, you know, whatever the event is and just fill that out and then I'll respond and, you know, we'll work that out as far as the calendar um, at Empower Defense on Instagram and Facebook. And um, you can email me as well directly at selfdefense at tondalindsay.com. Um, and also if you want to get a copy of the book, uh, which is F fear, it's called F fear, modern day women's self-defense guide. I highly recommend it to anybody, but specifically, um, I had in mind, you know, our 18 to kind of 24 population with the book, because that is when your risk, um, statistically is at the highest because you think about, you know, school and, you know, college and things like that. So this is the book here and it's available in ebook as well. So you guys can just download it. Uh, and that's on the website, backs, my empowered defense backslash uh, shop. Okay. You guys check the show notes. Cause I'm going to make sure to put everything in the show notes. So you can just like click and go and, and purchase, you know, book your webinar and uh, follow her on, on Instagram. Um, and definitely follow her on, on Instagram. I don't follow you on Facebook, but I definitely follow you on Instagram. because I'm more active on Instagram anyway. <laughs> yeah, you always drop, you always drop, drop nuggets on, uh, on Instagram. So you guys definitely check Tonda out there. But um, I truly enjoyed you today, friend. Thank you. I definitely enjoyed this conversation. We have to do it again for sure. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Because I was thinking that in my head. <laughs> <laughs> in the new year so yeah I'm gonna yeah have to- for sure hold you to that but um be- but before I let you go please well I guess you already gave a book because I always ask my guests for a book recommendation or an audible book uh that oh well to. yes <laughs> <laughs> this is what you need to be reading <laughs> because what happened um and it's too totally easy I broke it down in reference to you know you can skip around but it's super easy read. I go more in depth into the swivel technique. I give uh, ways for you to increase your intuition, your confidence. So there's action steps within here as well. And I just go more in depth into, you know, that mental, um, that mentality in reference to effing fear. Uh, the only way to conquer fear is to face it. That's why I named, I know some people be thinking this F stands for something else, but, okay. um, <laughs> and you and you can put that word in it too. <laughs> but really the F stands for faith, fear. And that is the only way to conquer fear. So if you just do little things, little fears, you know, maybe it's the dark, maybe it's, you know, heights. Um, when we conquer even little fears, speaking, you know, that's really the biggest fear is public speaking. So when you conquer little fears, it helps you to increase your confidence in so many ways. And then you can level up, you know, level up, level up. So this is the book. It talks about the mindset. It gives you um, scenarios, action steps. And and really, it's just, you know, a a basic level of self-defense and understanding how to take back control and reduce your risk of being attacked. You guys, you just said um, public speaking is like the number one fear a lot of people have. I'm need you <laughs> because B is voice. It's the swivel technique. You guys, yes. catch these correlations. Catch these correlations, guys. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even comfortable in front of you know people, and I, the jobs that I've had have always been related to people, which is interesting. But I've always just put myself out there and I can attest to the power of the more you do something that you're afraid of, the easier it gets, like the more comfortable you'll feel. So I'm a challenge all of you ladies to get uncomfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But one last question before I let you go. Okay. When when describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm give you two words. You you let me know what's your third word. Okay. Self-awareness. Purpose and 
and for some reason integrity comes to mind immediately um and it it surprised me but in reference to living your purpose you really have to be true to yourself and um and yield to what your spirit is telling you to do and honor that so i'm gonna say integrity um really be true to yourself and and um whether nobody's looking or everybody's looking. When you just really honor yourself in that way, I think that will really um, help you achieve your purpose Mm, and live your truth. I love that. When people are looking, even if they're not looking, still practice integrity. I love that. I love that. Donna, you amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Have you heard that yet? How about what? Have you heard that? I haven't heard it today and I'll receive that. Thank you. <laughs> and, and you are amazing as well. Like this really, I, I've enjoyed this conversation thoroughly. Um, you are amazing at what you do and I can't wait to come back. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you.